as networking was becoming more popular and we were building out a lot of different data centers with a lot of different cabling, it became very apparent earlier on that we needed to have some type of standardization. If we were going to run 10 megabit Ethernet or 100 megabit Ethernet or gigabit Ethernet, we would need to have wiring that we could have standardized so that we could go out to any provider, get wiring from them, and we'd be assured that it would run over that particular kind of network. To that end, there were two organizations that were called on to create standards for these. One was the Electronic Industries Alliance. This is the EIA. And it's an alliance of trade organizations. So a lot of different organizations getting together that develop standards for the computing industry. So if you've ever seen things like an RS, like an RS-232 port, that came from the EIA. You also see EIA standards with an EIA dash and the standard associated with it. And you can find out more about the EIA at their website at www.eia.org. The other organization that handled cabling standards is the Telecommunications Industry Association, the TIA. So obviously, this is one that deals with the telecommunications industry in general. And they handle standards. They do market analysis. They do trade shows. They do a lot of different things. So if you ever see an ANSI standard, a TIA, an EIA standard, of 568, that is referring to the Commercial Building Telecommunications Cabling Standard. And that's the one when we are building out our network infrastructure. That's the standard we use. To find out more about the TIA, you can see their website at www.tiaonline.org. When we talk about standardized cabling, what we're really talking about is different categories of cabling. And each one of these categories has a certain standard associated with it. One of the very first standards was Category 3. Category 3 cabling was one that was designed to support 10 megabit Ethernet and 4 megabit token ring. And that was one of the first types of networks that we started rolling out with our Novell Netware and Banyan Vines and some of these older network operating systems. But we quickly realized we needed some faster technologies, and we started to get faster network adapters. And so we started needing 100 megabit Ethernet connectivity. For that, we needed Category 5. And it was an update to Category 3. You know, as we jumped right over the Category 4, pretty much everybody went right to Category 5 because we were rolling out 100 me megabit Ethernet to the desktop. We were doing this everywhere. And so the wiring that we needed to put in our, in our walls, in our ceilings, in our floors, it all needed to be Category 5. Well, of course, our networks got faster. We started rolling out these new gigabit Ethernet networks. And we started rolling them out over copper. We needed even a higher category of Category 5. So there was a small tweak to Category 5 called Category 5E. This enhanced the Category 5 requirements so that we could run 1 gig Ethernet. So there was a tighter specification for not just the cabling for these Category 5E but also connectors for the Category 5E. Today, our latest category is Category 6. We're running 10 gig Ethernet over copper using some of these Category 6 requirements. And we can go 55 meters on Category 6. We can go 100 meters on the enhanced Category 6, the CAT 6A. So if you're doing 10 gig Ethernet, you need to go very long runs. You will want to have a CAT 6A category cable. Each one of these category types has different costs associated with them. And so usually you'll want to buy the right type of category for the networking infrastructure that you'll need in your environment.